Hey friends, I'm back and we're going to type some lures, some sockeye lures in particular. Uh, I've had some questions, guys saying, how are you, how are you rigging these up, man? So we're going to rig them up. Uh, stick around. It's, it's going to be a good one, right? Crack a cold one. Rainier, if you're out there. Sponsor brother. <laughs> Okay, stick around, like, share, subscribe, you guys know. Let's tie a floor. Uh, gonna use this 20 pound here because I like 30 pound more, but I'm gonna have to use the 20 because of one simple reason. That it, that 30 pound mono does not go through most one aught hooks when you're trying to snell them. It doesn't work. So Gamakatsu, split shot, drop shot. The reds. Like I said, I think you gotta use reds. Okay. So you guys know that watched Watch me snell before. My last video was pretty bad. I got not very many views. All right, put it through like that. Pinch. One, you're not gonna overlap them. Two, three. Whatever number you guys like, okay? And then you're going to take your tag end. Through the eye. Pull her tight. Okay. That's our first one. I'm just going to give you an exact replica of my f mine that's been catching my fish so far. Now, this way or that way... I don't know, guys. It doesn't really matter. I don't think. I think I kind of like that myself. It looks pretty fishy. The gap. I've been going a longer gap with a treble hook back here. And actually, let me let me show you guys. Here is an exact replica of what I was running last year. I made a copy of that for this year, and this is a replica of. So this is will be a the third replica uh as you can see i run a far gap back there it's almost at uh, least two fingers i run that gap back there because that looks pretty fishy to me right yeah floating back there Fuchi, and you got the piece of stinky bait and you got this red hook and to me i think that is an enticer so we're going to make a replica of this and to catch my first sockeye last year, I actually, well, that wasn't my first, it was my second one. Um, I was making the hoochie and I accidentally ripped them off when I was getting the beads up there. And so I took off two tentacles. I do that on all of them now. I think this is a one, there's one up there, two. This is a four beads that I'm running. Um, four beads, five millimeters, and then that's a six millimeter pink one. I do not like the pink. These are transparent pink from Bomac five millimeter. If you can find them, they're deadly. I got this pink six millimeter, whatever. Caught fish. So that works. If we're gonna make a replica of that, that's what we're doing. So. I was doing that longer gap, but we're gonna try, we're gonna try getting a short gap here and that this thing just gets a mouthful of red hook. The old mouthful of red hook, not cold beer. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay, one, two, three, four. Five, 
six, seven, eight. Okay. Go through the bottom. Okay. So I think that's going to be pretty, pretty good. You see the gap there pretty good. All right. <clears throat> and the, this is the hoochie. I like these ones a lot. They're pretty small. And then here you can see the exact numbers. It's the color 265 size SQ15 glow ultraviolets. Really like them. As you see, tiny. I call that a kokanee hoochie. And I think for beads, these are poochies. You know, whatever. The ones I want, I couldn't find, so. One, two. These are five millimeter beads. So we're gonna do four of them. And we'll see. See if I like that. You want to get that bead all the way up into the squid, the hoochie. And as you can see, now we're getting some bead action. We'll clip that tag off. Looks pretty fishy to me. Okay. Clip the tag. And top of my loop so I think I want this to be something like that I was doing 15 inch but you know I'm gonna do a little bit shorter probably about a nine inch leader right there and then the hooks trailing it back to at 12 okay do a loop. I've been doing the double loop knots. I haven't had any problems, so. The 20 pound is easier to do these. Watch me struggle. One. that so you got the loop and you got that now now yeah, we're good might even be 11 who cares wet it i don't know if you have to but i always wet them bottom of the hook there whatever we're at 12. Okay, pretty fishy. That's it. I mean, that's what I've been catching them on, guys. I got five this year, just on this rig right here. With the shrimp. Okay, let me know what you think. Okay, friends, so we're back. We got the rig. This is the slider. Okay, and that weight will slide like that. When the fish hits, it's not feeling the resistance of the weight so much. That's the theory. Okay, I go to this like swivel here. You could use a four bead chain, you know, these, whatever you'd like to a bumper. And I mean, it's attached to my bumper. Okay, the bumper. What is the purpose of a bumper? Well, if you're using sliding weights, not the downrigger, you want a bumper to space out your weight so it doesn't impede the action of your Dodger. So if this weight was right up to here on the Dodger, it would not it would not swim how you want. So you have a bumper, okay? Mine, like I said, I make these myself, you should too. Everybody should start doing things themselves. Okay, so from there to there, we're looking at a 26 inch bumper. Okay, 
that's how we have that. That's a 120 pound line. I use, you want, I could, you can go even stiffer, but you want a nice stiff line. Um, so it doesn't like get all kinked up and then this comes back. Cause what happens when you're letting your line out, I like to just pull it out like this. You're only doing 40 feet. Um, if you can find the right spot, I always just mess it up and I can't tell you how many times, even sometimes with a bumper, I've checked and not got a hit for, you know, half an hour and oh yeah, this is back here. Not gonna catch fish. Anyways, to the Dodger. Max Double D. This is just a it's just a regular guy. Nothing's nothing really fancy about this thing, but it's got this, and that's what makes it their thing. You could set this to different spots and it would, you know, maybe move your move it out. But direct when I'm at Baker Lake, I want my lines right behind me because there's a lot of people around most of the time. Okay, so they call this a Ott Dodger. Um, a herring dodger. I like the all chrome one, and I went to go get another one. I do have one; it's out in my truck. But they they were all sold out of the chromes. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, anyways, that's a seven point seven is what they are. I call them eight inch seven point seven. Okay, to that I like to put a little bit of Atlas Mike's Lunker Lotion. I've been using shrimp, but Kokanee like anise. Why wouldn't sake, right? So I'm going to try some of that. I put that on the butt of the Dodger. Okay. From there. Sorry if I'm the camera's shaking, but you know, I'm, I'm behind it here. And then from there, 12 and a half to the hook. Okay. I was even going like probably a 13 to the hook to a treble hook there. Sometimes a liter, like I said, that'll, that, you know, a full liter to the 15 inch, whatever you guys like. Okay. 10, 12, 15, 18. Sometimes if you got something like a wiggle hoochie, that's got its own action a little bit, you know, something like that. So that is the setup. And of course, I mean, I've just, you know. I got to give it up to him. Eagle Claw. That's yeah, upside down. But yeah. The old kokanee. Feather light. 7.6 feet. And I use that to an Abu Garcia. Max DLC. Digital line counter. That's what you guys hear is those beep, beep, beeps. That's what that is. So... Anyways, so that's the rig. Yeah. Go out and catch yourself some fish. Tip it with some coon shrimp right up there on the top. Just a little bit of the tail right up there. You could spray some of this krill shrimp and stuff, that water stuff I was telling you about. Put some of that on there. Okay. Make your own stuff. Get out and experiment. Pinks, oranges, reds. Those are your colors. You could probably throw some chartreuse in there every now and then. Yeah. Fuck around, find out, have fun, catch fish.